Hi, this is Chris Korlinski from the Microsoft SQL Server Escalation Services team. This video is a walkthrough of setting up a SQL 2000 replication distributor using T-SQL scripts. We'll see that configuring the distributor is the first step in setting up SQL Server replication. We'll verify the distributor is not configured. We'll walk through setting up SQL Server replication distributor using T-SQL scripts. I'll highlight some of the key parameters and then show how to generate this T-SQL scripts automatically from SQL Server Management Studio. Here we are in SQL Server Management Studio. If I want to see if this distributor has already been configured, I can look here in the system databases and I'll see there's not a database called distribution. I can also look and right click on the replication folder and I'll see that the option for configure distributor is available. This shows us that the distributor is not already been configured. For this demonstration, we're going to walk through using the tSQL commands to set up the distributor. So I'm going to first verify I'm in the master database. And the first command is the sp add distributor command. And for here, there are a couple of parameters. One is the distributor name. In this case, I'm using the add add server name to specify my server that I have running. The heartbeat interval is the default that the agents will use to determine if there's a problem with a distribution or a log reader or a merge agent. In this case, the heartbeat interval is set to, for the agents to check every 10 minutes. I've got a password here specified. In this case, I've just given up the password, password one exclamation mark, not a very good password. But this password is used by the distributor underscore admin account. It's an account that the replication uses to do administrative work between the different servers involved in replication. So I'm going to go ahead and run the distributor sp add distributor command. And here are some default agent profiles. I'm not going to go into the details here. You can look at those in the SQL Server books online if you'd like. Now the third step is adding the distribution database. And there are a couple of key parameters here. One is the data folder location. If my distributor and the publisher are the same server, then I may want to put the distribution database on a drive separate from the publication database. This helps to spread the I.O. across. We have also have some retention days here we can specify. Uh, distribution retention day. This is a default for the cleanup that says if the transactions are older than three days, then we don't need those, those transactions anymore. And also it's used that if a subscriber is not synchronized within that many days, the subscriber is considered expired. This is used for the distribution retention. A couple other parameters we have is the data file size, uh, history retention. When we're troubleshooting problems with SQL Server replication, Sometimes it will increase the history retention from the default of 48 hours to maybe 3 or 4 days just to give us a little bit more history data to look back through. And uh, also security mode, we can say to use Windows or SQL authentication. I'm going to use Windows authentication for this demonstration. You can see here I'm going to run the add distribution database. I'm using some of the default settings for the database location. Again, you may want to change those depending on your configuration. Let's go ahead and run this. We should see now after this is done is that the distribution database gets created. So let me go ahead over here and refresh my system databases and we'll zoom in. And you can see now I have a distribution database. If I also right click on a replication, you'll see I have now distributor properties to select from and distributor publishing and distribution uh, disable publishing and distribution is now an option. I'm going to go to the first one, distributor properties. When this screen comes up, over here in the right hand corner, I've got a build button. I can pull up the details. So let me go ahead and do that. And I see here are some things like my default data file location and here are my retention period settings. Go ahead and close that. Now I'm going to go up here in the upper left corner and I'm going to select Publishers. Now I don't have any Publishers configured. Again, I'm just setting up the distributor, the first step in replication. 
but I'd like to show you this administrative link password. Here's where I put in a very weak password, password one exclamation mark, but then as you can see here, the publisher must use this password when it automatically connects to a distributor to, pour, to perform some administrative operations. And that's where we specified that again in the script. So I'm going to go ahead and close these distributor properties. Now if I also want to use the uh, t replication settings here to generate this T-SQL script for me, I can right click on the replication folder and select generate scripts. Let me show you that, generate scripts. So you can right click on the replication folder, select generate scripts. See that the distributor properties is selected here. And I'm going to come down to the bottom and under the generate script I'm going to say open in a new query window. And then let me close this wizard. And you can see here this looks very much like the script I already ran. In fact the only difference should be is over here in the password you'll see we don't use the password in the text. Uh, that just for security reason you'd have to put the password in yourself. But you could save this script it has all the settings in here. Add the distribution database settings. If I ever never needed to reconfigure the distributor, I could just run this T-SQL script. Let's go back to the script I had, and I'm going to go ahead and drop the distributor and disable replication. It's a very powerful command because if I had replication set up and I was publishing data, this would actually drop the publisher and then drop the distributor. But for the demonstration purposes, I just wanted to show you this SP drop distributor and I'm passing in the parameter to 1, 0. Again, the SQL Server books online has the details on these. This should take a moment to disable replication. I'm going to right click on my system databases and you'll see here that the master data, the, sorry, the distribution database is now gone. That shows me that the distributor has been uh, disabled on this server. So as we took a look at, uh, to setting up the distributor is the first step for SQL Server replication. I could use a wizard, but in this demonstration I used the T-SQL scripts that I generated from SQL Server Management Studio. Again, you can generate these scripts and save them later in case you need to reconfigure the distributor. For details, refer to the SQL Server books online. You'll see those stored procedures and all the parameters are covered there. I hope you enjoyed this video on setting up the SQL Server replication distributor using T-SQL.